Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 11 of my web design and programming tutorial. If you didn't watch the previous tutorial, definitely check that out. If you don't know, I mainly focus on PHP right now, but we're going to move into other programming languages for all the people sending me messages, asking me what I'm going to cover, JavaScript and jQuery. That will be coming up very soon. What we're going to continue doing here today is going over classes and all the things I haven't covered so far. So here I'm creating another animal class like I created before, and I'm going to create a private variable called name. If you remember from the previous tutorial, private variables can only be changed by methods or functions that lie within the class. Here I'm giving a default value and then I am going to create what is called a static attribute or variable and a static attributes value is shared by all objects of the class. It's like a shared value that every class can access and the value will change if those other classes that are or objects that are associated with the class decide to change it or access it or do whatever. It is just simply a shared variable that every single object will use. And if one object changes the value of this static value, that is going to be reflected whenever any of the other objects go in and try to access this shared variable. So I'm going to call it public, obviously, and then define it as a static attribute. If you're confused by why I keep saying attributes or variables, it, in objects you're supposed to call them attributes instead of variables, and you're supposed to refer to functions as methods. So that's why I'm doing that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to count up every single time I create a new animal object. So that's the point of this. And this is probably the most common way that static variables are also used. And then I'm going to create a construct file function. And I'm going to allow the person to set the name for the animal that they create. However, if they do not give it a name, I'm going to assign it the default value of no name. And I'm going to echo here that the construct function was called. And I do this a lot in my code whenever I first create it. Obviously, I don't do it afterwards. And I'm going to set the name for this new animal, just like that, by calling the setName function, which I'm going to create here in a minute. And here is how you access static variables. You type in self instead of this, followed by two colons, and then whatever that is called, whatever that static variable attribute is called. And here I'm just increasing the value of it by one. And now I'm going to show you how to destroy an object when it's no longer used. You call the destruct function. And all I'm going to do here is notify you that destruct was called. So you'll know when a object has been deleted. And I'm going to create some functions here that are going to both return the value of the variable called name as well as set it. And whenever I use the final keyword, that means that I do not want this function to be overridden by any other methods whenever any new classes extend this animal class, which I'm going to explain to, to you exactly what that means here in a second. Inheritance is done whenever you create a new class from another class, and I'm going to show you this in a moment. Thus, you borrow the data and the methods that can be found there and you can then overwrite them. However, if you do not want a certain function to have the ability of being overwritten, you start it off with the final name, and then it cannot be overwritten. And it would be a good idea to have functions that both return values as well as set values to be assigned with the final keyword. And from the last tutorial, you know what that's doing. That's just returning, if I spell it right, returning that value. And I'm also gonna assign the final keyword for this function. And this is going to set the value for the attribute name name, right like that, and then close that off. Now I'm going to create some other functions that I want to be made public. Make noise, most animals do that. Another is going to output favorite food. I want to access that value, call this, which is a reference again to the object, and then followed by the attribute's name, close that off. And there we defined a whole bunch of different functions for this animal class. Now we've got to close off that class, and here I'm going to show you how to extend that class by creating a new class called dog, and then following that by extends, and then the animal class name. And what this means is this class dog is automatically going to get all the functions and all of the attributes of the animal class. That's what we're doing here. That's all we're doing. We can overwrite those functions that don't begin with final and we can change any number of other different things. First I'm going to create function construct and again name is equal to and we give it the default value of no name. Start this off. Now if you want to call the parent 
construct method. You would just start off with parent, colon, colon, construct. And it'll run everything that is in the parent or animal class for you. You're going to pass the value of name. And you could also do this by typing in animal, colon, colon, construct. So that's another way you could call the parent, what is called the parent class. Animal is the parent of dog because dog is extending the animal class. And if you don't define these construct and deconstruct files, the parent is automatically run. And that's all we're going to put inside of there. And here we're going to overwrite the make noise function that we saw up here. Make noise because we know that dogs do more than just grr. They also bark. And how you overwrite a function is just simply by creating it. Then whenever you call this new function make noise, it's going to run the dog make noise version instead of calling the parent. But otherwise, everything else that isn't overwritten, it's going to call that. And if you still want to call the animal make noise function, this is how you do that. This is going to call the original, but because dogs also bark, I'm going to put bark bark in there as well. So that's how you create a new function from a previous version, and that's how you overwrite functions inside of there. Now I'm going to create a new object of type dog, my newest class. And I'm going to call him Grover. And I'm going to create another one, just so you can see how garbage collection is handled, meaning the calling of the destruct function to eliminate objects that are not used in memory. And then I'm going to use Grover to call the new make noise function that you just created, or you use to overwrite the original. And I'm going to call the favorite food function as well. And this is how you call the move function. Even though you did not overwrite it with the dog class, it still has it. And then if you want to echo to screen the static variable, which will show you the number of animals that were created, you do that just like this. And I scroll up here, I made one little error. This should be num of animals. And if we file save that, you can see here what exactly would happen. Well, I created Grover, a new object of type dog. So the construct file was called create that new object. Then I created another object, Paul. Construct file was called again. Then I had Grover make noise. So you see Gur was printed. Why was Gur printed and bark bark? The reason why is we made a reference to the original animal function or version of make noise. And then we followed that with bark bark. Then we come down to favorite food and it says my favorite food is meat. Called the move function that prints out walk around. And then I made a reference to the total number of objects that were created because we created this animal static variable or attribute called num of animals. And since two objects were created, you can see it printed two to screen. And then we no longer needed these objects, so it called both the destruct files. And that is pretty much everything you need to know about object-oriented programming with PHP. Like I said, I'm going to cover some things in the future through examples, but polymorphism really doesn't work with PHP because you cannot extend functions and you can't do a lot of the other different things that you can do with polymorphism. Um, you can sort of hack it and I'm going to show you some of the hacks in future tutorials, but this is all definitely you need to know for now. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. And up next, I'm going to go over file IO. Till next time.